Thanks, Paul. What did the Leafs do to sort of steal the momentum uh, or take control in the second period, Paul? Well, they capitalized on an awful lot of uh, broken plays. You know, um, at the end of the day, our puck carrier is not skating. They got above us, and we still tried to make those plays. So counters back on you. And anything that we had going or opportunities we had to get to something going, we were it just slowed our game down to a point that you're just reacting. And um, we'll look at it as the things that we need to do better. We didn't skate particularly well in the second period. Go next to Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Thanks, Gregor. Paul, you uh, you made a bunch of line changes there in the second period. Uh, how did you think the group responded once you uh, moved some pieces around? We got going a little better in the third. I thought that uh, uh, Nikolai skated well on the right side there and created a, a good opportunity, good offensive zone opportunity on Kyle's goal, so I didn't mind that. I, I didn't think we had a whole heck of a lot going uh, before necessarily after it. I'll go next to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. Hey, Paul. Um, I don't know if you'd compare the second tonight to the first in, in uh, your first game against Calgary, but your players admitted both those periods weren't their best periods. What's been the barrier to kind of turning around the momentum in the middle of the period? They've done a good job of doing it in the next period, but what's been, you know, st stop them from kind of halting the brakes and changing direction in period? Yeah, I, I don't know that I'm going to tie those two periods together. That was the first period of our opening schedule. Um, and I, I didn't feel it was as one-sided as the second period. Clearly, we got dominated in the second period here tonight. Um, I, I thought we were on the tipping point in the first. You know, we come out even. Uh, shots are fairly close to even. Uh, but we were right there to not playing very well. Um, and then we, we found a way not to play very well in the second. So I, I, I thought we had a bit of that first, even though it was a flat period for both teams. I thought we were right on the edge of, of slipping into a game that we don't like to play, uh, bringing pucks back, slowing down when we touch the puck instead of speeding up. And uh, in fact, you, you get slow against anybody in this league, you're going you're gonna to have a problem. But slow leads to bigger gaps. And they certainly exploited those in the second. We'll go next to uh, Marat Tash from The Athletic. Go ahead, Marat. I'm not sure if the audio is all right. I'm getting an unstable internet sort of connection warning. Um, I'm just asking about uh, the the Marner goal, where I guess Wheeler gives you a four on three advantage in the slot, but the shot comes from up high with Justin Hole. Is that the kind of trade off you were talking about? You know, when you when you pack the middle, there are things that get given up. Is that the example you were speaking of the other day? No, that's off a rush, and there was a handoff in the neutral zone to a D that couldn't get pressure on the puck carrier, but. Blake was actually the low man on that play, and Mark would have been the fill for the, uh, the way that play developed. So we didn't want our uh, weak side winger that low. We, we, had, we didn't have one at that point. Next, uh, Ted Wyman from the Winnipeg Sun. Go ahead, Ted. Hey, Paul, how would you assess the work of your power play tonight? Uh, you know, the last two is good. We had really good looks, lots of possession time. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, didn't love the first one, but the next two, I thought we were we were creating the places where we wanted to go with the puck. We got a slot shot on the first one, so it wasn't bad. We could have, obviously, you need that you need that goal, right? You need that tying goal, and it didn't happen for us, so you'd be left thinking that our power play didn't get it done, but that wouldn't have been the story of the game. I won't, I won't assess it as uh, as what, what caused the, the loss. Uh, time for a couple more. Uh, we'll go next to Brian Munns from TSN 1290. Go ahead, Munzee. Paul, if you could evaluate uh, Logan Stanley's NHL debut and then also what you saw from getting Jansen Harkins back into the lineup, obviously somebody you were familiar with from last year. Yeah. Um, start with Hark. You know, we bumped him up there because he got a real good forecheck going in the third period. He's got some speed. I liked his energy. He looks healthy. Uh, kind of like where he left off in camp. Very, very happy with Logan's uh, debut. You know, he was certainly not the weak link and uh, his reads were good. His gap closure was good. He looked like he had, didn't look like it was his first game. So very, very pleased with the progress that young man's made in the year. And final question, Ken Weaver. Go ahead, Weaver. 
Paul, what are your early impressions of Derek Forbert? I mean, for a defensive guy, that was quite a pass he made to Kyle Connor there. At the uh, if you look at, at the disruption of plays defensively, the impact that he's had on a game, he's over two. He's been our best. Um, really, really strong, great reads. Uh, saved a goal the other night, generates a goal uh, here tonight. So he's been excellent for us.